Distinguish option money from earnest money. First, option money is a money given as distinct consideration for an option contract while earnest money forms part of the purchase price. Second, option money applies to a sale not yet perfected while earnest money is given only when there is already a sale. Third, in option money prospective buyer is not required to buy while in earnest money, when given, the buyer is bound to pay the balance. Lastly in option money if buyer does not decide to buy, it cannot be recovered while in earnest money if the sale did not materialize, it must be returned. Essential Requisites of Equitable Mortgage First, parties entered into a contract of sale, and second, their intention was to secure an existing debt by way of a mortgage. Contract to sell is a bilateral contract whereby the prospective seller, while expressly reserving the ownership of the subject property despite delivery thereof to the prospective buyer, binds himself to sell the said property exclusively to the prospective buyer upon fulfillment of the condition agreed upon, that is, full payment of the purchase price. Double sale There is double sale when the same object of the sale is sold to different vendees. Principle of caveat emptor, it literally means, let the buyer beware. The rule requires the purchaser to be aware of the supposed title of the vendor and one who buys without checking the vendor's title takes all the risks and losses consequent to such failure. The Maseda law is applicable to sales of immovable property on installments. It covers primarily residential real estate bought on installment. It also covers the financing of real estate on installment. It also includes subdivisions, condominiums and those under PD 957. The recto law refers to sale of movables payable in installments and limiting the right of seller, in case of default by the buyer, to one of the three remedies. First, demand exact fulfillment. Second, cancel the sale if two or more installments have not been paid. Third, foreclose the chattel mortgage on the thing sold, also in case of default of two or more installments, with no further action against the purchaser. By the contract of agency, a person binds himself to render some service or to do something in representation or on behalf of another, with the consent or authority of the latter. Loan is a contract where one of the parties delivers to another, either something not consumable so that the latter may use the same for a certain time and return it, in which case is called accommodatum, or money or other consumable things, upon the condition that the same amount of the same kind and quality shall be paid in which case the contract is simply called a loan or mutum. Comedatum versus motum first, the object of comedatum is non-consumable and non-fungible while object of motum is money or consumable second, the cause of comedatum is gratuitous, otherwise it is a lease while the cause of motum may or may not be gratuitous. Third, the purpose comedatum is the use or temporary possession of the thing loaned while the purpose of motum is consumption. Fourth, the subject matter of comedatum is real or personal property. Generally non-consumable things but may cover consumables if the purpose of the contract is for exhibition. While the subject matter of motum is only personal property. Fifth, the ownership of the thing in comedatum is retained by the bailer. While the ownership of the thing in motum passes to the debtor. Sixth, the thing to be returned in comedatum is the exact thing loaned while in motum it is the equal amount of the same kind and quality. 7th, in comedatum bailer bears risk of loss while in motum the debtor bears the loss. Are fixed, savings and current deposits in banks governed by the rules on deposit? No because fixed, savings and current deposits in banks and other similar institutions are not true deposits but are considered simple loans because they earn interest. Bank deposits are in the nature of a regular deposit but they are really loans governed by the law on loans. Deposit is a contract whereby a person delivers a thing to another, for the principal purpose of safekeeping it, with the obligation of returning it when demanded. An implied new lease or tachita reconduction will set in when the following requisites are found to exist. First, the term of the original contract of lease has expired. Second, the lesser has not given the lessee a notice to vacate. And third, the lessee continued enjoying the thing leased for 15 days with the acquiescence of the lesser. Land titles. Indefeasibility and incontrovertibility of certificates of title. The certificate, once issued, becomes a conclusive evidence of the title ownership of the land referred to therein. What appears on the face of the title is controlling on questions of ownership of the property in favor of the person whose name appears therein and such cannot be defeated by adverse, open, and notorious possession, neither can it be defeated by prescription. 
one who deals with property registered under the Torrent system need not go beyond the certificate of title, but only has to rely in the certificate of title. Mirror Doctrine All persons dealing with a property covered by Torrent certificate of title are not required to go beyond what appears on the face of the title. Where there is nothing on the certificate of title to indicate any cloud or vice in the ownership of the property, or any encumbrance thereon, the purchaser is not required to explore further than what the Torrens title upon its face indicates in quest for any hidden defect or inchoate right that may defeat his right thereto. Regalian doctrine, all lands of whatever classification and other natural resources not otherwise appearing to be clearly within private ownership are presumed to belong to the state. An innocent purchaser for value is one who buys the property of another without notice that some other person has a right to or interest in it, and who pays a full and fair price at the time of the purchase or before receiving any notice of another person's claim. Quieting of title. Whenever there is a cloud on title to real property or any interest therein, by reason of any instrument, record, claim, encumbrance or proceedings which is apparently valid or effective but is in truth and in fact invalid, ineffective, voidable, or unenforceable, and may be prejudicial to said title, an action may be brought to remove such cloud or to quiet the title. A notice of lead pendants is an announcement to the whole world that a particular real property is in litigation, serving as a warning that one who acquires an interest over the said property does so at his own risk or that he gambles on the result of the litigation of the said property. Thus, one who buys land where there is a pending notice of lead pendants cannot invoke the right of a purchaser in good faith, neither can he have acquired better rights than those of his predecessor in interest. Torts. Damages. Doctrine of last clear chance or doctrine of discovered peril or doctrine of supervening negligence. This is also called as the humanitarian negligence doctrine, where both parties are negligent but the negligent act of one succeeds that of the other by an appreciable interval of time, the one who has the last reasonable opportunity to avoid the impending harm and fails to do so, is chargeable with the consequences, without reference to the prior negligence of the other party. Damnum absque injuria, damage without prejudice, a person who only exercises his legal rights does no injury. If damages result from such exercise of legal rights, the consequences must be borne by the injured person alone. The law affords no remedy for damages resulting from an act which does not amount to a legal injury or wrong. Proximate cause is that cause, which, in natural and continuous sequence, unbroken by any efficient intervening cause, produces the injury, and without which the result would not have occurred. Note, proximate cause is not necessarily the immediate cause, it's not necessarily the nearest time, distance or space. The doctrine of proximate cause is applicable only in actions for quasi-delict, not in actions involving breach of contract. The term, damages, is the sum of money which the law awards or imposes as a pecuniary compensation, a recompense or satisfaction for an injury done or wrong sustained as a consequence either of a breach of a contractual obligation or a tortious act. Damages can only be paid with money and not, pale, because, pale, is not a legal tender currency in the Philippines. Six kinds of damages first, moral. Second, exemplary or corrective. Third, nominal. Fourth, temperate or moderate. Fifth, actual or compensatory. Sixth, liquidated. Thank you for watching this video. See you on the next one. Write in the comments below where you are watching this from so I can personally thank you. Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified whenever I post. See you on the next one.